Hello survivors and welcome to another video. In today's video we are going to be beating Ragnarok 3, just for starters, on Hafgrim with only Fire Codex. Now because he starts off with his staff we are only going to be using uh, the level 1 staff because we can't really get around it but this is the tree that we are using it focuses on burning damage effect of probability and status duration as well as duration cooldown and damage uh, but let's get straight into it uh, 804 leaves used in the tree nearly everything is maxed out pretty funny but uh, let's see what we can do we are only going to be uh, playing on Alfheim Ragnarok 3 just for starters if it becomes too easy and you guys are like, nah, that was too easy. We will try it on Ragnarok 4. And then if that's still too easy, we can do it on a Ragnarok 5 and see how much we like to, uh, you know, <laughs> deal with ourselves in terms of uh, dealing a lot of uh, self damage. So we need a lot of projectiles and we need a lot of <clears throat> duration and projectile speed. So obviously the more projectile speed we get, the better it's going to be for us. We don't need the electric cage over here, unfortunately, because there is no fire to electricity. There's no real reason to go for it. What we do need is to grab ourselves a reset if possible, but uh, you know, not really. Uh, it's going to cost too much gold in the beginning and we need to just kind of ascend the fire codex and go from there. But we'll see what happens. It could be quite a, a nice early game or it could be really difficult for us. We could hold off till the first uh, shop to use the reset. I mean, to see if we are lucky enough to find reset, but we will see how that goes and go from there. We're not really too worried about that so much. It's just a nice addition to you know our damage and things like that. So this is the perfect uh, stats that you want to find on the Infernal Codex. You want damage, projectiles, and projectile speed. Let's take this upgrade. Uh, again, we don't really want the area. We do want as many projectiles as possible, though, because that's going to help us with the size of our... Uh, uh, what do we call this again? Our Fire Codex. And the bigger the Fire Codex, the easier it is to survive. Also, projectile speed does make it a lot easier for you to survive as well. So a couple of things. First thing is that you want a lot of projectiles because that's going to increase uh, how far you can stay away from enemies. The more projectiles you have, the better it is going to be. And again, we're looking for damage projectile and projectile speed. But I would like to have the legendary. There we go. That's the perfect last upgrade uh, for our build. And we're just going to wait for the five... Uh, for the five skill points now we do have the option to increase the amount of upgrades we get in chests as well as making some of them rare again these are the three stats you are looking for but plus two to projectiles is going to help and as you can see uh, it is starting to get bigger and bigger and once we get to our final form you'll see that it's going to be massive because we even get the ascension that adds another 12 balls to our projectiles so it will be on 25 in total so we will be uh, sorry a ring of 13 balls on the outside and then even plus 12 to our uh, damage in total but as you can see the ring there just grew even bigger and we are now in a much more comfortable space and once we make it even bigger with its ascension uh, we will be in a fantastic spot but now uh, as you can see we don't actually need the ascension yet we're dealing quite a decent amount of damage already to the elites as well as the enemies so we are going to wait for the first shop it is going to just give us that little bit you know even if it is a one percent chance to get ourselves the uh, relic the reset relic then we will be in the most epic or you know best video spot possible so you know for the content we are going to wait and see what happens in terms of uh, getting ourselves reset or not you know we got to we got to kind of try and make it a tuber some way or another and the best way to do that will be to get reset but uh, you know it's going to go on to youtube regardless of getting reset or not but it is definitely going to help us now other things that will make 
The Fire Codex even better is getting yourself increased duration as well as increased cooldown reduction. The reason for that is duration makes it so that the balls are out for longer and then the cooldown makes it so that the balls come back out faster. So you do want to look for those stats. So best items to grab actually will be things like the mushrooms. So grabbing yourself a golden mushroom would be the best relic besides for reset and then getting yourself uh, things that increase duration. I don't think there is a relic for duration uh, or even projectile speed. Uh, would be nice if the developers could add projectile speed into the Yggdrasil tree for us because that could be extra points especially on uh, uh, like that would work really well on a lot of characters such as Halfgrim and it's just going to be really really good for him but we did get a reset on the shrine over here we haven't even looked at what the kill shrine is or anything like that just yet we're not too worried about it they will still be there after the shop uh, unless it's a money bag then that's going to be quite irritating because we haven't got there yet and uh, you know soon we might have the boss fight and not having that's going to uh, just be a little bit of a bummer. Ah. Okay, we killed that guy. I really don't like those uh, flying insects. The heal that they have is quite strong. Uh, it just, you know, kicks you out of nowhere. Uh, not being able to out DPS their damage is quite funny. And then you just land up taking... Uh, you know, you think you've killed the boss and wham bam is back to full life again that's quite frustrating sometimes so you do have to just be careful of that we're not going to spend our gold yet again that is going to stay there so we're not too worried about that and we've got ourselves the sword light sword we will get it and then sell it because that's some uh, you know three gold that we didn't have or two gold that we didn't have and that's a free reroll in the shop and we will still have some money to buy a self reset if we manage to get it so we don't need you there we go three extra gold we are going to go for the duration now and we have two options we can either do the video where we take his ultimate but i think it is better that we don't take his ultimate it's just more in line with you know how the build works we don't need the ultimate i don't think so not on ragnarok 3 at least but if we did do it on 4 or 5 uh, where we don't take uh, anything else but the fire codex we might have to take his ultimate as well just for that extra bit of survivability and damage because you know his ultimate does uh, slow enemies down uh, slows projectiles down and it also uh, you know it, it's an R frame so if you have an attack coming towards you and you use your ultimate it is going to stop the damage that otherwise could kill you so uh, very good to know that this is possible, but otherwise, uh, yeah, that's just how it works. <clears throat> All right, so still in a fantastic spot. We can actually grab that over there. We will grab status duration a bit later, but we do want the cooldown to damage. And then we're going to grab the nine damage over here. So I will show you what happens with the nine damage. A lot of people think that, uh, well, I mean, in the very beginning of the game, when we started playing with half Grim and everything like that, we all used to take the other, the magic tool upgrade, because a lot of people used to go for his staff. But there is one thing that you don't necessarily know about his staff, and that is when you go for the try attack, it upgrades his staff to an element. So if you grab the one that gives you plus nine damage for all elements, so, uh, you know, uh, this one over here so plus nine damage to fire ice and electric relics this gets turned into a fire ice or electric relic when you ascend it so it is a uh, four extra damage than this relic over here and it just makes sense to go for this one especially since we're only playing with fire codex anyway but just in case you're not and you did want to play with his staff you can change the staff's element with its ascension and therefore the nine plus nine will be better for the staff in terms of raw damage but anyway that's just a, a little bit of <clears throat> trivial knowledge that i'm sure everyone already knew but let me know down in the comment section what build you guys would like to see me try uh, a high ragnarok stage with where we only use one weapon so it could be like iron uh, the iron hammer from axeldor it could be something from helga uh you know please don't don't tell me like uh 
the uh, the the blue owl or turret deck i'll be really really <laughs> frustrated with something like that that is probably next to nearly impossible unless you have reset so not going to happen don't mention those two to me but uh, let's see what else we can think of in terms of damaging relics uh, but tarot deck and that other l are really not damaging relics guys they are support relics and beating ragnarok with just that uh, might be uh, impossible but you know maybe now that i think about it i'll definitely give it a look because it doesn't hurt to try so we'll see but i highly doubt uh, anyone is able to finish it with just those two <clears throat> Alright, so first boss down. Luckily, we didn't need to grab our... Uh, what are we calling it now again? Uh, we didn't need anything with regards to that, please. Okay, we're going to grab the Mura Mura here. The only reason we're going to be doing that is to get more gold. And that just allows us for a little bit more rerolls. Again, we are looking to see if we can get ourselves a man that's poison to thunder all right so unfortunately there is no uh reset for us that is quite unfortunate so we'll just grab the chest as well as the health and we got ourselves projectile speed which is fantastic so uh you know still in a very good spot unfortunately no reset so we will be uh upgrading our fire codex now all right, so there we go. There's our huge fire codex. I have actually turned the bloom slightly down uh, just to make it more manageable. Uh, we can grab that now as well for the extra life. And now you can see we're dealing even more damage uh, because we got 12 extra damage and we're just in a much better spot. Uh, Electric Pearl doesn't really do anything for us. It doesn't really matter though. We're just taking it because it's free. We can sell it to grab extra gold if we need be. But we probably won't anyway. It's not really uh, too much of an issue in terms of anything. So uh, it is what it is. It's just there. <laughs> not a useful relic, but uh, you know, it has its... It, it, it is actually very, very good on Hafgrim. But because of the build that we're going with, where we're only doing fire damage and maybe poison, uh, it's not worth it. If we found the fire charm first, fire to poison charm, and then the poison to electric charm, we would have taken both and then been happy with this uh, relic. But because we don't have that, we don't have to worry too much about picking up this relic. It's just extra monsters uh, to get some XP for us. But as you can see, even on the next stage, we're dealing huge amounts of damage to absolutely everything. As long as our orbs hit them, we are in a very, very strong spot. So we don't really have to worry too much about that. And again, the more projectiles we pick up from ruins and boxes and things like that, uh, chests, sorry, not boxes, uh, are going to make us even stronger because it's going to one, increase our range as well as, you know, uh, just make it a lot easier for us to survive. So more projectiles equals more damage. Again, just doing this so we can get absolutely more elites, one as well as more uh, possible chest drops so having elites spawn on this relic shrine or this raid shrine are fantastic who doesn't like extra chests i mean look at that there's one already there's another one uh, we don't want project uh, area so we can actually re-roll this let's see oh that's unfortunate so we go for the flat damage come on don't give me anything for the staff come on game don't be like that okay perfect projectile speed Again, projectile speed is going to increase our overall DPS because it's damage per second. And if our projectiles are flying further faster, then that's going to just increase it. Unfortunately, there, a double uh, epic chest on our staff, which is rubbish for us today because we're not going into the staff. But Fire Codex, one of my favorite weapons definitely an easy build to go for the Ragnaroks. We definitely will try this on a higher difficulty, but first I would like to know what you guys think we should try it on before that. So again, we don't need that. We're going to just sell it. We don't need to slow enemies. Uh, it's just going to make it uh, longer for us to kill them. So let's just do it straight away instead. All right, we've got a lot of skill points 
Let's go put them into this. Over there. Perfect. Into this. <clears throat> area of effect. I mean area. And then we'll grab the unlimited. That does give us cooldown and damage if we do get hit three times. So we do have a lot of blue hearts for that. And the cooldown will be quite nice. Uh, if we do get hit. But I don't think we will get hit. Maybe against the boss we'll get hit. But now that we've got Ragnar's shield. So we definitely won't get hit. But uh, let's keep going. We've still got two more elites before the boss fight at the top over there. But we will, will be fine. We are very very strong. Let's go see what that shrine can give us. Um, there's not much relics that we could get if we did. Oh it was the electric shrine I remember now. We'll take the extra damage. Uh, you know get rid of the one unlimited stack. And then that's going to just give us that extra bit of hope for later we do have a burning torch relic over here so burnt enemies receive more damage from other sources uh, i don't know if that means that fire codex isn't going to do 10 percent more burn damage because it says from other sources so does that mean it has to be like the fireballs will deal more damage or if the fireball burns them then a uh, fire codex will make it so that they take more damage I'm not 100% sure how that works. Maybe I can uh, double check with the developers. But from the wording, what that means is that the fire codex, uh, if it burns enemies, then the, the projectiles that uh, are caused by the fire codex are going to... Oh, well, not by the fire codex, by the burn projectile relic, are going to uh, deal more burning damage. And if those fire projectiles burn before fire codex, then the fire codex will do 10% more burning damage. Uh, that's how I read it. If I am wrong, you can let me go know down in the comments as well. But again, mostly just want to know in the comments what you guys think about uh, this as a weapon. And then what you think would be really good to try this or doing something like this with another character. Again, not tarot deck or uh ire or whatever the the bird's name is uh, because those two are really really big supports and it's not going to really get any 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 better on them maybe the bird the blue owl uh, it can work on if you get like really lucky maybe if you get a reset it would work on them so maybe we can try get it on uh missing and do it on ragnarok 4 with just the the owl but i really don't think the owl has the damage uh, to to do it but really maybe maybe that's a very very good uh, Saturday silly Saturday video where we use the the owl uh, as the only damaging relic so it could be very interesting and uh, that would uh, be quite yeah quite interesting so there's a good idea we'll do it as a silly Saturday using only the owl and we'll see where that takes us but a ruined tyrant down and dusted. We don't have any gold, unfortunately. So if I saw reset, I would have been completely upset. So we'll just grab the two blue hearts. Again, we've got, uh, I mean, if we found one of those area enhancers or damage enhancer relics uh, inside the shop now as well, that would have been really, really sad. Because uh, we've got two ascensions and we wouldn't have been able to afford it. So <clears throat> now we don't want area of effect give me damage uh okay we'll just take the five percent damage again we don't need anything else we're just looking for damage or projectiles now because that's just going to increase our overall damage as you can see we are taking quite a bit of time now to kill the elites so we do need to just try and grab more damage hopefully the rng tonic over here gives us damage or projectile speed but if it gives us an area again not really too big of a deal but definitely not the best of uh, rolls we could have got. Getting ourselves something like a cooldown reduction is also really, really strong here. So we got ourselves cooldown reduction. That's perfect. And please be something good. Nope. We just get projectile speed from the chest over there. All right. So now we need to find ourselves a more gold. We want to get ourselves Astrid Shield. That's just extra survivability. Uh, as you can see, we do take uh, free damage every now and then. Again, not not that that's a bad thing because we do have infinite or infinity. And we do need to pop it two more times. And we will be dealing 50% uh, more damage and 100% more cooldown. 
and you'll see that the fire codex will just pop off. So maybe at the boss we could actually do something silly like get hit on purpose and uh, see or twice or maybe even three times now four times because we're gonna have uh, two shields and the two infinites and we'll go from there but as you can see uh, ooh, he's got giganticism uh, this could be quite rough especially since we've got the healing uh, buggers over here as well so whoops let's see how this goes we'll just have to play it as best as we can and go from there unfortunately we aren't able to go out of the ring but as you can see we do deal more than enough damage to deal with these characters or these enemies and we are in a very good spot but i wouldn't really recommend doing this it is quite dangerous but uh, I, I like to live on the dangerous side uh, as you can see but uh, even getting the freeze not the the most fantastic thing but because we do have the effect of probability as well uh, it does put us in a good spot as a safety measure so we will have uh, more chance of surviving hits if we are able to you know uh, get as much defenses and uh, chill enemies or you know like freeze them i wouldn't say it's freezing because it doesn't keep them frozen solid but uh it, what it does do is it will give us that uh, extra slow that the enemies will now have <clears throat> okay we're not really too worried about glitch i'm not going to do that again we are nearly at the boss fight and then we got to fight astrid uh, i am interested in getting myself the three extra gold now we just need two more gold and that relic will be ours again it is an astrid shield so that is going to give us another hit possible to be taken and that's just an extra measure so we are actually getting a fantastic amount of relics as well as chests i mean if you have a look at how many chests we're picking up it is actually absolutely insane get ourselves 10 percent increased duration that's fantastic and uh, you know if we we could get astrid shield that would be great but it doesn't look like we can and as you can see the damage is enough uh, to kill everything but because you only have one weapon it still becomes quite difficult i think if this was ragnarok 5 we probably would be dead already uh, but uh, we are where we are and that's fantastic so just enough gold to get astrid shield <clears throat> and it didn't reset which is fantastic as well because otherwise we could have got something and that would have been really funny and sad at the same time but there we go astrid fart let's see how quickly we can deal with her and go from there we also have freeze so you know 65 percent chance to burn as well that's going to be pretty funny but no gold over here for any uh relics over there i mean ruins but that's okay and it's only taken us 22 or i guess it'll be 23 once we actually get the fight done and dusted with we'll prop this maybe it kind of burn her or something like that we do have to be careful though because as you can see when you do have your fire codex on you can't really see anything around you and that, that does put you in quite a difficult spot especially in terms of dodging astrid's attack so <clears throat> try and keep your distance from her if she does open her or put her hands out uh, you know she's going to shoot her beams at you but otherwise you are in a pretty safe spot in terms of uh, not having to take any damage and luckily for us she didn't get auto heal because that would have been quite uh, dangerous but again we do just need to stand on the outside we didn't even need any of the shields and we managed to do it so that was a fantastic run as you can see we only used infernal codex i hope you guys enjoyed the video Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and always remember, keep safe survivors. Until next time, cheers.